You are back live on B Varsity Live Weekly. This is Zach Ewing and Trevor Horn. Our thanks to Lexi Keen of Stockdale for joining us. What? No. BG, BG's here too. We don't he's a stuffed animal, okay? <laughs> he's a stuffed animal. One day we're gonna yeah. we're gonna let Trevor know that BG's not real, and that's gonna be like telling him that Santa Claus isn't real and it's gonna be a sad what? day. I know. Uh Trevor, yeah. do something useful and tell us what's going on in prep sports these days. Uh, we had a good tennis match earlier this week between Stockdale and Liberty. Uh, top two teams in the Southwest Yosemite League. Stockdale won 6-3 to three in that. Those two teams are basically jockeying for the second and third seed behind Buchanan uh, for the D1 seedings when the playoffs come out next month. Um, so that was a good match. I think both of those teams are really deep, probably other than – Independence down in the SYL, who's nine and zero now, I believe. You know, it's kind of hit and miss on other teams with a lot of depth. I think those are the top three teams in town. In volleyball, last night we saw Garces beat BCHS in three sets. Kim Harper is back as a head coach of Garces. I think she's got another. We talk about underclassmen. She's got a great freshman in Perry Starkey. That's a really good team. Hannah Marigel is a really good setter for them. Um, is They're Garces 11. the biggest threat to Centennial in the SWIL? No, Liberty is by Li- far Liberty the biggest. Is, okay. Yeah, Liberty. Uh, but Garces is there, and Frontier's there too, right? Frontier. They're all there in some aspect. BHS is still a good team. They went toe-to-toe last night um, at home against Clovis West. Clovis West is number five in our rankings. Um, and Stockdale, I know, did very well at a tournament down south too. So really, there's not going to be an easy match. In no, that I think Stockdale's a little bit down this year. They still have Sophie Ralphs, but, you know, it's kind of like what you see with BCHS. When you lose your center and your libero, you kind of lose that back line presence. And as strong as a team can be up front, you really need that back line presence with a good center to kind of just set the tone. Um, and I think that's where you've seen BCHS kind of fall. But I think Misty Goodman is understanding of where they are. They've played some, a lot of D1, D2 teams. Um, and she's going to go up to a tournament up in Redwood where she said it's going to be a lot of teams that she's going to see in the playoffs. She likes to have that change this year because it's going to give her younger players a chance to kind of uh, mature as the season goes. And then uh, what else are we missing? Oh, cross country. Big weekend for Deviana Salcedo, a fr- another freshman over at McFarland. This girl is incredibly fast. She wins the freshman uh, race down at the Seaside Invite in Ventura. She beat the competition by 77 seconds. Now, she's only a freshman, but when she was a seventh grader, she ran the 5K up at Woodward where the central section of the state championships are. She ran a 1738 as a seventh grader. That year – Could she run three miles faster than you could run one? She could run three miles faster than I could probably run a half a mile, bro. Wow. (laughs) You're you're really slow. Yeah. No, but the thing is is that 1738 when she was a seventh grader would have been good for – Eighth, I think, in the state. Yeah, that, that, that year. right there is an in amazing D1. stat. That's so an amazing stat. That's another freshman that we're going to see a lot. Clearly, in a slower race, racing in seventh graders. Where if well, she, she had ran been... against boys that year too. Oh, she. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So that's the incredible part. So uh, she maybe the sky's the limit for for her. Um, we'll see it this weekend. She's going to be down in Southern California again, racing in an elite race um, as. Both McFarland teams are down there. So we'll see how she does against some of the other state and kind of West Coast competition this weekend. So that'll be interesting. How about uh, – What am I missing? What have we done? We've done golf, tennis, cross country, volleyball, water polo. Water Garces polo. is very, very Man, good in boys girls and girls' team, water polo. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see how those two teams go. But we'll keep a close eye because, you know, they may have a doubleheader. Once they, again, they like may be did. two-time ch- ch- champions in boys and girls. It's yep. shaping up to where they could both have yeah. uh, number one seeds the way it's looking. Of course, it's still, still quite a ways off from that, another month or so before those playoffs begin. Hmm. Less than a week away. We're really talking Buffett's about Muppets? Okay. Oh, yeah, we are. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, I may miss it because I'm having a, a third child. I don't know what I'll ever do if I miss the premiere. Yeah, what are we going to do? Well, uh, people are going to miss you, Zach, when you, ha- when you take a week off. So uh, That was... Um, that was high pitched there, my friend. You found another octave. Yeah, so what? Yeah. No, I, I, I'll be fine. I'll be, I'll be out a week. I'll be too. back, though. I'll be back. Uh, okay, let's talk a little football. Weird weekend last weekend because of the late starts and the postponements. Yeah. Um, but a week two, give me a week two takeaway. Week two takeaway Chavez, really good football team. I had a feeling you would go there. Yep. Well, I was there. That yeah. makes sense. But man, that's a great team that can, pl- that can score on both sides of the ball. Um, Liberty, I don't 
I, I, I don't know if it hurt them or helped them not playing Central. I think it really kind of ticked them off. They couldn't yeah. play that game. And maybe that's a good thing yeah. as they go up to Buchanan next week. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but I think it I, I do think it hurt them because it would have been nice to have a game against a team you felt like you could beat with your with Jordan Love and Matt Hubble healthy, and they haven't had that. I mean, they, it's yeah. almost like this game against Buchanan in some ways is going to be a, a season opener for them again. And, and by the way, it doesn't feel like this because of you know the cancellations last week and uh, the NFL season just started. And all, But shoot, some teams are going to be 40% of the way done with their yeah. season tonight or tomorrow night. I mean, four, four regular season games out of 10. So we're looking at the season being almost half over for some teams here. Yeah. So we're getting down to the nitty-gritty. I mean, league play begins in the SSL next week. It's still uh, three weeks away in most other leagues. But, um, you know, you're looking at... Yeah, October 9th is the start for... Right. But you're looking at things getting rather serious now, and uh, Liberty Buchanan is a huge, huge game for seeding because we think both of those teams will be in the top half of Mm -hmm. the SWIL on the track. And frankly, the the SWIL, if you're talking Division I seeding, has not really built, uh, not even not a strong resume, not really a resume at all. I mean, Stockdale lost to Atascadero, Bakersfield lost to Edison, Liberty lost to Ridgeview. I mean, who... Right now, the top seeded Division One team, if the playoffs started tomorrow, from Kern County, I couldn't even tell you who it would be. Centennial, Centennial, maybe. because Centennial they at, have two at, wins, at maybe an eight or a nine. Yeah. I mean, so, so these teams are going to have to start racking up some wins. Now, obviously, we think whoever wins the SWIL will end up at least with a top four seed. That's pretty safe to say. Um, but you could see a situation where they are the four behind the track champion, maybe Clovis, and behind an Edison and a Bullard, and uh, you know, De- I, man, I know. We're just a few weeks into this. I just don't know what to make of Edison's offense. I, I don't either. And I Edi- don't. See, I, and Edison's only win is against Bakersfield. Bakersfield's winless. So yeah. what if Bakersfield's just really down? I mean, I don't think any of us think that's the case. No. But it's possible. Um, they've played two close games and lost them both, and that's fine. We'll talk about them too. But it, it really is for, for being, like I said, after this week, now some teams have had buys, but other teams are, are almost halfway through their seasons. We're talking about uh, – Really, kind of a mess. We don't know what's what in the central section right now. So let's talk about it a little bit. Let's go. But is that some... always a bad thing? No, it's fine. I think that it's actually in, makes it a little bit more intriguing. I, I mean, year. it is hard to sort of frame which games are okay. You got to keep an eye on that game, but uh, it's fun. But when it an comes to Friday nights, man, that makes it even more fun. Hey, our B Varsity game of the week this week live here on Bakersfield.com and on on ESPN Radio 1230 in Bakersfield is uh, Bakersfield Christian at Ridgeview. It'll be our first chance to see the Eagles. Uh, You can listen to that game on the radio. You can watch it here on Bakersfield.com. Darren Carr's Eagles against Dennis Manning's Wolfpack. And and the Eagles got a big win last week, beating Mission Oak, the first win in Darren Carr's tenure. But, of course, Ridgeview is going to be another test entirely. Uh, let's get to some predictions. We got five minutes before our last break, but we'll we'll knock some of these predictions yeah, out we're right now. We're going to start Saturday. There's actually four games on Saturday, including the Holy Bowl, which we'll get to. This is Emmanuel Christian against Upland Christian. I'm going to go Upland Christian here. Yeah, what me the heck? too. I have actually have them by a few touchdowns. U C H S. I have no idea. Okay. Uh, Maricopa is at Faith Christian. Maricopa saved your butt last week, by the way. We were different on seven games. And as of Friday night, I had beaten you on five of the six. That's incredible. And Maricopa, Maricopa not only saved you, but they whipped Shandon, and I had Shandon. Yeah. So I, they, they, they made it uh, so that you were only down three games on me. But I got Maricopa again. As do I. I think Maricopa showed me a lot last week. I think they can come up to Kalinga and beat Faith Christian. Moving on. Rosemond and Desert Christian. Uh, tough one. Both teams have struggled. I'll go Desert Christian. Me too. Okay. And the last game on Saturday, we'll spend a minute here. Garces at Memorial, the Holy Bowl. Garces got off the schneid last week. They beat Burroughs. That's what they did last year, too, and then they didn't win again Again, after that. They went 1-9. and nine. Uh, Can they go up to Fresno and beat Memorial? I, I will say I'd feel a lot better about Garces' chances if the game was in Bakersfield. Something about the Holy Bowl and home field advantage just makes me lean Memorial here. I do, too. I think that you know they're making the right strides at Garces, but not in a road game, not up at Fresno, not this week now. Yeah, Garces has a shot at a couple more wins as we go forward, but if you look at their schedule, it's difficult to tell where those wins are going to come from. Next week, they got to play St. Bonaventure, one of the best teams in the southern section, and then they get into the SWIL, so where are the wins going to come from if they don't come here in the Holy Bowl? Right. So it's a big game for Garces. Okay, now that's all Saturday. Moving to Friday, another eight-man game. Mojave hosting Thacker. And this is an important game in eight-man ball. Thacker, one of the best teams in the state in eight-man ball. I go Mojave. I just uh, I know him better. I trust him. 
Scorpions, right? Uh, Mojave, no. Mojave is the Mustangs. Mustangs go to three and zero. Desert is the Scorpions. That's right. And Desert, coming up right now, faces Lancaster. Desert actually lost last week. One of the five games I got you on uh, against Barstow. I'll point them all out. Don't worry. And this week they have to hit the road and travel to Lancaster. Uh, I think the Scorpions get back on track. Yeah, me too. I want to go back and actually change some of mine because I want to be different than you. <laughs> okay. Uh, Paraclete at Burroughs. I believe this is one. We're only different on two games this week. I believe this is one of them. Paraclete's 0-3, as is Burroughs. Paraclete's played a better schedule. I'm going Paraclete. I took Burroughs as a home team. Paraclete, they do play better at home. They yeah. do play better at home. Paraclete does have um, a few solid players. I know they had one kid that was verbally committed at one point to USC. So I still think the Burrow Burroughs. The Burroughs. Get off Burroughs, the snag. Uh, yeah, it could happen. I thought they would last week against Garces, and they didn't. I think Paraclete is at least as good as Garces. Uh, okay, Fraser Mountain at Vasquez of Acton. Fraser Mountain really struggled. Vasquez, eh, little, enough, better enough to make me think Fraser is not going to get his first win. Yeah, it's one, ta- one touchdown win for Vasquez in my eyes. I've, I've probably, I haven't picked a score on this one yet, but I'm going to take Vasquez by more than that, I think. Okay, two more before the break. Let's do two more before the break. Kern Valley at McFarland. Kern Valley's won 12 of its last 13 regular season games. McFarland has lost 12 of its last 13 regular season games. Any reason to think that those trends stop here? I don't know what it is, but they keep churning athletes out up there in Kern Valley after Lake Isabella. So. And it's Bronx. just an experience level. Even on the road, if they get into trouble in a game. Those kids have been there before. They've made comebacks before. And, and by the way, if they could win here, it would set up a really nice game next week in Corcoran, mm-hmm. the team that knocked them out of the D5 playoffs last year. Uh, up next, we have... Speaking of Corcoran, that's why I did this. Shafter is at Corcoran, uh, the defending Division Five champs. Corcoran. They've only played once now. They got postponed last week, and they're, they had a bye in week zero, so they've only played one game. Maybe an advantage for Shafter, but I've got Corcoran winning this one rather easily. Corcoran wins. You have Corcoran, I think, by one point. One so point. you think it's going to be a lot closer. Shafter, to me, uh, they got to find themselves right now. They better do it quickly because the SSL is no joke. I mean, who who in the SSL can you pick on right now? Arvin, maybe. Maybe. Shafter, you're not maybe? picking on Taft. You're not picking on Kennedy. You're not picking on Taft. Picking on Kennedy, Chavez, Chavez picking maybe on for Christian. Yeah. No. It, yeah that's, that's a very good small you're school not picking on Wasco. Right yeah, exactly. Uh, okay. We're going to take a break. We're going to get to the bigger school games after this here on B Varsity Live.